to inform you that we have arrived at the Labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I wager it'll take a bit longer than it takes you to lose your patience and storm out of your ship looking to get shot. To be honest, that'd make my job a lot easier. You come out, we shoot you full of holes, and then everyone goes about their day worry-free. Except you. You'll be dead. We're on lockdown. We have standing orders to shoot intruders on sight. Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Looks like you're gonna have company at the execution. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that, just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. How can I be of assistance? May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Muting volume now. The captain did right by us once. Now it's our turn. The board will never own Groundbreaker. Not while I breathe. Push on, Mardad. One thing, let's just hope we're able to get out again. Nice of them to leave us a few options. Thank <laughs> you. 
Its evaluation is stirring. MSI. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help.
me. Look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. Ah, oh, and the wayward doctor. Are you about done with your escapades? We have faces that need lifting, after all. These days, I'm more interested in breaking them. Wouldn't mind taking a swing at yours. And... Oh, uh, <laughs> I had heard you were dragging around a repurposed janitorial mechanical? My staff jokes that it's because you're a walking pile of refuse. Interactive database updated. The unique organic substance labeled Chairman has been classified as filth imminent for incineration. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. I'm not in your way, you dullard. You talk to me. You want to go die in a blaze of glory? Be my guest. Besides, I don't know what you think you're doing here, but Sophia's doing good work up there with Phineas. Your efforts will be in vain. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working class man. It's a miracle. Contaminants have been neutralized.
and job fulfilled. Captain, you have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. Typical. Running your mouth in the middle of a crisis. It's almost as if you delight in chaos. My reports described you as one of Halcyon's sharpest minds. I can't imagine why you'd do something so irrational. I should have dealt with you a long time ago. You were always too dangerous to leave unchecked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised by your impertinence. Leaving you alive was my greatest mistake, but it is a mistake I intend to correct. I have Dr. Wells in my custody. Once I've secured his cooperation, I can move forward with the program. I can repair the damage you've done. I can set things right. I'm aware of your propensity for violence. Halcyon is a bloodier place because of you. I take no pleasure in this, you know. I simply have no other option. Leaving you alive is too great a risk. Goodbye, Captain. I had a feeling you'd say that. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something.
You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah, all in a day's work for you, huh? You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, you're right. The road is long. We haven't a moment to waste. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? You won't hear a word of disagreement from me. <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves. But I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Sanjar's civil liberties and worker-centric policies were slow to catch on with the other corporations. 
But as Halcyon began its long, arduous journey toward recovery, many of Terra 2's smaller townships started adopting MSI's alternative corporate structure and eventually became entirely self-sufficient. In the coming years, many of these townships managed to eke by, where otherwise they might have starved. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junle the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Ellie savored her adventures on the unreliable. Once they were done, she returned to life as usual running missions of dubious legality, shunning respectable work, and living life to the fullest. She meant to reach out to her one-time captain, but she was always bad at keeping in touch. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets, there was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief and sole engineer. As hard as she tried to drink them away, Nyoka's memories eventually overcame her. Traveling with the crew served as a constant reminder of the family she'd lost, and so she eventually returned to Mana to get back to what she found most comfortable, the deep end of a bottle and the far end of a trail. Few have seen her since, but travelers often swear they hear her and her machine gun in the night, screaming swears and spitting bullets. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, Despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope's scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. 
Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. You administered the colony in your own image. With the old power of the board destroyed, a new government of Halcyon rose with you at its center. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years that were to follow and helped ensure the survival of the colony until the end of your days. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.